All right. According to her letter, she said she would meet us here by train so that we could ride on mm. to Clemens Point and meet with Kylie. But where is she? Uh, uh, I don't know. Nicola said that she was supposed to be here as well. Um, I'm not really sure where she is. She rode off before me. That's odd. Why did she decide to take the train? Uh, uh, I think that somebody else is sharing the brain cell today. Mm, yeah, you're probably right. Oh, well, I guess we'll just wait. She'll probably be back in a minute. Yeah, I'll just... We'll just hang out. Damn horse bucking me off. Ugh. She does it all the time. Swear to God, that horse hates me. Oh well. Just have to run the rest of the way. Nearly there, though. Ah! Oh no, red! Oh, come on! Oh, come on, please! I don't need this today. <laughs> Swear to God, if you shoot me, Dad. Ah! Oh, I'm supposed to be recording soon. Mm -hmm. I wonder where she is. <sighs> no idea. It's a great mystery. Oh, well. I mm -hmm. guess we're just going to have to head on without her. Okay. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Wait. Guys, guys, do you... God damn it! <laughs> Before we begin this episode, I just wanted to thank all of you once again for supporting us during season two. We have reached the halfway point, and I'm proud of the accomplishments we've made thus far. Since we didn't get a chance to do this for reasons that will soon become clear, I wanted to extend a huge thank you to our special guest for joining us around the campfire. We immediately hit it off the moment she joined our call, and it became difficult to figure out where to actually begin the episode. The episode begins with some pretty good advice, so I thought that would be a good starting point. Catherine, Nicola, and myself are honored to have the Queen of the Camp join us, and hope to have you back as soon as possible. powered on we had a technical difficulty and the record button didn't get pushed like we thought it was we were about 30 minutes in when we realized it and i cried oh god it's so frightening i remember when i was interviewing brenda romero this season there was a certain point where my computer just went dark oh, no. and there was just no way for me to tell if i was still recording or not and she was in the middle of telling this story i mean the end story is that it was recording but i mm -hmm. couldn't tell and i didn't want to interrupt Interrupt her, you know, it was very hard to gain access to her and she's extraordinarily busy. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I just, I was sweating. I was sweating. And um, I see why you cried. You know, you feel responsible or I feel responsible when someone is giving me their time, you know, to, to not waste it. <laughs> exactly. So I'm sure I, I see why you cried. Yeah, Howard it's... is a dreamboat though. Yeah, he, he was is. he was very he was very nice and he was very understanding, but I still sat in the corner and just kind of cried the rest of the episode. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry and I totally know how that feels. I I I mean when I when I sent over the files to uh, my editor, I just said, I said, can you please let me know right away if everything is there, you know? Mm -hmm. And and he was like, I'm sorry, I'm driving from Massachusetts, but I'll be home <laughs> in four hours. <laughs> Like, no, like, no, no, no. Hiding oh. your nails. It was hard. Oh, no. it, was hard well, but it all worked out. And so. see, the worst yeah. part is, is because, is because I'm the one that that does all the edits. I had to sit there and listen to it again, like what we had, and it's like so it was like just reliving it, and that became one of the most edited shows I had to do because he was also really quiet. So mm. it was like the universe is just really pushing home that I made a mistake. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, you know what? You learn from them. I mean, right? Like, no one expects you to, you know, to not make any mistakes. And, yeah. you know, if you're going to make a mistake, you make it with Howard. He's a sweetie. He is. He was He was very nice. Like, um, everybody that we've interviewed so far with the Red Dead community has been, like, amazing, really. <laughs> Just... It's really, it's really like a family. I mean, 
we have, I'm sure you've heard this from everyone, but we have a, a like a cast text thread mm-hmm. and we are on it every single day. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally every single day. And sometimes it's just Peter sending really weird selfies and um, <laughs> <laughs> Steve Palmer sending memes from Florida. But, you know, we just adore each other. It's really, it sounds I'm very, like, sounds very similar to our Facebook group chat that yeah. usually gets going. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? Is it like that? Like, Basically. is it all love? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, some, yeah. Days I, some days I can't type in there because I'm, you know, busy with something. Either I'm at work or I'm in class or, you know, I'm doing something else. But I will catch up. You know, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll go back and I'll read and it'll be TikTok videos, <laughs> memes, uh, people talking about, you know, like a movie or an experience or Jackie's just like, can you believe that guy at work? <laughs> you know, like, and it's always just, it's it's always so nice to see it because there was something going on. So then when it's quiet, everyone's like, are y'all okay? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's always surprising if, if no one pops up on our Red Dead thread for a couple of days. It's like, whoa, where is everyone? <laughs> oh, where'd everybody go? Is everybody okay? But yeah, we, we totally get that. I think it's really cool that you guys have kind of, I mean, like, I know part of it was born from, like, you guys were the only people that could talk. And I was just recently listening to your podcast with Roger, where you were talking about, like, in during the process, I know it was, was it Roger or was it Alex? I can't remember. I was listening to both. Um, <laughs> on one of them, you said, um, while you guys were actually working, since you couldn't hang out, you couldn't follow each other on social media, you've actually become better friends now because you shared such a unique and awesome experience. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And I think that's with Alex. Alex, I think we were, t- I was talking to Alex about how Alex and I have, I mean, Roger and I worked together a lot. A- a- anytime you went to work, Roger was there, but Alex was flown in from California. And then there was actually a, a period of time when Alex was unavailable. If you listen to that episode, because her, her mother passed away, she got married, she mm-hmm. went on a-, a honeymoon, her mother passed away. It was a really intense period. So mm-hmm. I didn't work with her as much. And, um, and we couldn't, you know, we couldn't be seen together. We couldn't do anything. So, um, th- and the other thing is that, you know, like Roger and I would have scenes together a lot. And so there's a lot of standing around on set in between takes. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but, si- but since release, we've all gotten uh, even closer. And so, yeah, it's a real, uh, it's a real gift. It's, it's an unexpected and just magical gift. Our friendship. Yeah, I know like we're not a very big podcast yet, but um, <laughs> we have, we have this little like set group of people that are, our biggest fans basically and we've mm-hmm. kind of brought them into our circle um one of them is uh tiffany or tiffer joe i think it's horn chick on uh oh, i know who she is mm-hmm. teacher tiff i yep. actually thought that maybe she was going to be on here today i wasn't sure if she was part of the group or not because she seems so involved yeah. well let's see was it last week's episode or the week before that she was actually the a week, guest on. The, it, week it before, was... the week before yeah, it was, it was two weeks ago. The the two weeks ago episode uh, where we had our where we talked to her about uh, teaching. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's so lovely. That's she so really nice. is. Yeah, she really is. But yeah, so she gets all the insider information, and so we were like, "Hey, guess what we're doing today?" And she was like, "What?" I said, <laughs> "We're interviewing Kyla," and she was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> So oh, she, she's always I. I will. I will. We have it recorded too. So, you know, you when go. Jackie edits, of course, oh, yeah, we'll keep. Pull it out. Pull it out know. and tell her, tell her that I, that I say a very special hi to her and uh, <laughs> deep admiration for teachers, especially now. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a re- that was one of probably one of my favorite episodes that we did, other than like mix episodes. Because when Mick comes on, it's always going to be wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that guy yeah. just brings the party with him. <laughs> he really does. It's kind of insane. <laughs> so we've been talking for a while, but let's jump into this. So first of all, may we call you Kylie? Yes, please do. I'm like to be polite, so I always ask that question. <laughs> I I love it. Yes, Kylie is great. You can, if you call me Miss Kylie, uh, I find that charming too. But yeah, <laughs> Kylie works. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for coming on to our show today and for giving us your time. We really appreciate it. And hopefully we don't yeah. mess this up. We're already recording, so we're already we're already one step ahead of yeah. the game. <laughs> You're we're just... in this. It's recording. And thank you so much for having me. I really am very honored to be here and I really appreciate it. Thank 
you. We're, we're just happy that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I just want to say before we get completely into this, I want you to know something. This is something I've always wanted to tell you, but I wanted to be like either face to face or on a like on a chat with you before I said it. I started following you on Twitter like a while ago and we interacted back and forth. And then all of a sudden you started following me and I was like, I think I was at work when it happened and I was like, what? <laughs> Why? So then about that time is when you started really pushing for like pushing the, the let's play podcast. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, crap, because I usually didn't like podcasts. But I was like, well, I'll give this one a shot. And I started listening. I listened from the very first episode and that's I became addicted to it. I love podcasts and now I'm addicted to them. It's been a particularly difficult weekend at work. So I just like, well, I've got Kylie coming up, so I'll just start listening to podcasts and completely zoned out to the point that my coworker comes in and she's like, are you still here? You were supposed to leave like an hour ago. And I was like, man, I'm in this. Leave me alone. Let me finish working. I am in this. But yeah, it was actually um, listening to your Let's Play podcast that gave me the idea. I was like, I could do a podcast. And then I met Catherine and I met Nicola and we just talked for hours. And I was like, why don't we just record this and see what happens? Mick is the that one that makes kind of... me so happy that I'm so thrilled. I'm just so thrilled. You know, I never thought that I wanted to host a podcast either. So when the gamers approached me, you know, it was so interesting because when I was approached about hosting this podcast, I didn't hesitate for a second I just mm -hmm. said yes I was like yes I'll do it and this is a great idea and then I thought oh my gosh I have no idea what I'm doing like <laughs> but I really <laughs> I, you know I never thought I'd want to host anything I'm an actress that's what I do I act I don't you know I, I don't think of myself as a host of any kind but I do love people I love people mm -hmm. and I and I found that they're especially I think that that hosting that podcast gives me Lee puts me in my favorite place to be which is a learning space mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. listen I research the hell out of my guests I want to be able to ask intelligent questions that are based on you know on on some sort of knowledge but I don't have to be the expert they are the expert and I love learning when we started hashing out for season one I was like oh how am I going to interview a streamer or how am I going to interview someone from the tech side and I thought I'm going to learn that's what I want to do I want to learn I don't need to know anything about streaming to ask questions about streaming and so mm -hmm. I have loved hosting this podcast and I'm so glad that it's been meaningful to you and oh absolutely yeah and that it inspired you to do your own thing that's it what did. it's about right yeah so yeah. Mick is the one that kind of lit the fire under our behinds to get us to actually do it. But yeah, the inspiration Ooh. absolutely came from you. So thank you. We thanked Mick. So thank you for providing that inspiration and for being there and for being so like supportive and awesome. Oh, that's so nice. I love this community. I really sometimes being on social media can just feel like such an epic time suck, you know, More drain. And, um, Very drain. you know, yeah, 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 yeah. But this Red Dead community, I think is, I, maybe I'm wrong because I don't have experience with the whole, with other fandoms, but I really feel like it's, it's just so supportive and I feel like we nurture each other. I um, and I always feel like, you know, I should follow more people. I just, I'm so bad about that. I've had friends who are like, can you please follow me back? And I'm like, <laughs> when did you follow me? I don't even know. <laughs> so I'm so glad that I didn't blow that with you because I really, I, <laughs> sometimes I look at my Instagram and I'm like, I really don't follow very many people. No wonder, no wonder I see the same people posting every single day. I really need to like... <laughs> expand my horizons i need to do something about that yeah it's that's actually you know what's really funny about this is that uh, those are actually questions that i had wanted to ask because i was like how did you get involved with the with the gamers they just kind of approached you and were just like hey you want to host this podcast yeah i got something right here for you <laughs> Well, yeah, more or less. But one of the founders of the gamers is a friend mm -hmm. of mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. I know one of the founders for many years. And so when she started the gamers and she knew that I was in a video game, she asked if she could just pick my brain some because mm -hmm. she really, you know, she she was just learning about the gaming space when they were founding the company. And so, I, you know, I would meet with them and, you know, they would take me to very fancy lunches and just ask me questions about women in gaming and what I had learned.
learned from going to, you know, comic cons or, or what my experience was. Mm-hmm. And she would always say, like, let us know if we're taking up too much of your time. And I was like, this is fun for me. I love talking about what I do. And I, I always felt like the gamers platform was something I wanted to see flourish. I think that the mission behind it is really valuable. And so mm-hmm. I was like, anything I can do to help. So then one time she said, can, can we take up a little more of your time? And when we got there, she said, okay, so this is a pitch meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and I really want you to host this podcast. And I went, absolutely, I'll do it. And then I was like, what did I just agree to? <laughs> That's really cool, though. Um, it was really, really a fantastic experience. And, you know, so then she, then they went through my agents and the union and, you know, made it all above board. And yeah, that's how it started. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, and also, I just wanted to make mention, obviously, we've talked about Mick and we've talked about Howard being on mm-hmm. our podcast. You are the first camp female. Ah, what so, an honor. So the queen has arrived. <laughs> here, I, here I am to take my throne <laughs> we forgot the the crown is in the post we'll, we'll get it to you eventually <laughs> oh yeah I mean listen but how great are the women in the game my god they I, I love them yeah, yeah. and that, that's one thing that that's one of the things that I love about Red Dead specifically is they don't shy away from uh, they don't shy away from the bad things that were happening at the time like they they don't brush it under the rug like some do like oh yeah well you know slavery was a thing but it's okay we're fine it's cool like they make mention <laughs> mm-hmm. of it but also like the position that a lot of women were in and all this stuff and I feel like like Red Dead didn't do one of the common mistakes that a lot of games do when they, ha- especially when they have a bunch of a bunch of female characters. They didn't do a lot of fan service. They didn't do a, a well, here's this one really strong female character, and that's it. I have to interrupt you for a second. What does fan service mean? Fan service is usually if you're watching like a television or a movie or something. If it has a female in it, it usually there's like shots of cleavage or shots of a panty uh, shot. So, you know, yeah, so hypersexualizing, hypersexualizing yeah. the women on the show. Or, got it. Got it. or okay. other side of that is um, if you're if the female character in question is geared more towards women, they either paint this, they either paint her as either being cold, hard, um, emotionless to be strong, mm-hmm. or they paint mm-hmm. her as like ridiculously over the top emotional because that's how women are supposed to be or something of the sort. So. Yeah. Yeah, fan service can kind of go yeah. either way. But and I love the fact that they didn't do that. They actually like it was such a like these are real people and it feels like real people. And so every time I would come back into camp, it was like, "Ah, I'm home now. Here's my people. Here's my family." <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that and I've told this story before, so stop me if it's if um it's overkill. Uh, you know, there's something about Susan Grimshaw that I didn't really realize until the game was released and I started talking to fans, which was that, so first of all, playing a middle-aged female character in a video game was a real opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. Because she adept with her shotgun and she goes on missions and she's, you know, she's very much uh, uh, an important member of this gang. Mm-hmm. She, so I remember when I'd been working on her for a few years, you know, I, I, I shot this game for four and a half years and I remember like a few years in, maybe three years in, I was working with our incredible director, Rod Edge, who's just one of the best directors I've ever worked with. And and I was, and we were, I can't remember what scene it was, but but just something where Susan is really letting Arthur have it. And, um, and he was giving me direction and I was taking it. And then he was just sort of looking at me with this, this critical eye. And I was like, what? I know what I'm doing exactly what you're telling me to do. I know I'm, I'm doing. And he said, yeah, you are. I am just really, oh wait, are we allowed to swear in this podcast? Yes. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. He said, I am just really afraid that people, that our fans are going to fucking hate Susan. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, what? We're three years into this thing. Like, maybe you should have thought of that sooner. Um, but what's amazing is that, yeah, there might have been that thought that, like, you know, if you're talking about 18 to 25 year old boys that are out there playing a game, that this middle aged, you know, bossy woman is just going to be hated and brushed aside. But all credit to him and to Rockstar. They didn't let that stop them from creating this character with me, through me, who gets to be bossy, who mm-hmm. gets to be mm-hmm. cranky, who gets to be foul tempered, who gets to be sometimes worried, and but who also gets to be loving and maternal. 
And, you know, she gets to have all of those emotions Mm -hmm. and they didn't shy away from it. And I think when the game was first released and I was like, Ooh, how are people going to feel about Susan? Uh, (laughs) What was so amazing to me would be, especially the young men who would say, God, I hated you so much. And then, and then your loyalty, you know, made Susan one of my favorite characters. And I was like, you know, credit Rockstar for, you know, for giving us as characters all room to, to breathe, Mm -hmm. you know, and and evolve and, and giving credit to the fans that Mm. they just wouldn't write off characters in the first, you know, 10 minutes. I, I love Grimshaw, but I I will say she scares the hell out of me. (laughs) No, no joke. She reminds me of one of my old managers at my old job. Oh God. Oh jeez. And anytime I'm in camp and I see her striding towards me, I think back to any time at the old job where I would see the manager in the distance doing the exact same. And I would get, <laughs> it's like a, a flashback. And it's like, oh, I haven't done anything wrong. I swear. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I wonder how she would feel about being compared to old Grimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I think Grimshaw would eat her alive. Yeah. I remember the first time I, I worked with Mia, the very first time Mia and I worked together was the scene where, or I say, where Susan says, I don't care how you feel, girl, you know, and, mm-hmm. and we, you know, we're wearing these helmets. And so I literally was grabbing her because it's supposed to be grabbing her by the ear. So I was grabbing her by this helmet and just mm-hmm. tossing her to the ground. And I thought, oh, wow, this is, this is, <laughs> this, this is pretty bad (laughs) (laughs) that was my that was my first experience relating to any other female in camp that was that was shooting that scene with Mia and you know if you if you follow us on social media you'll know that Mia and I are extraordinarily close now and Mm -hmm. you know who would have thought that that was the beginning of a magical friendship To be fair, uh-huh. I will say in real life, uh, one of my best friends, I met her because when we were in like fourth grade, I kicked her in the butt, literally kicked her in the butt and then ran away and we became <laughs> best friends after that. So, I mean, it worked. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a way to start a, a friendship. Nothing I always find it interesting. Um, whenever you have like somebody who's like hard and tough and like... I, I guess in a way slightly angry and cranky. Um, the person who always plays them is like, it was like, was that too much? I'm so sorry. Like, Did I hurt you? You know, like afterwards. And I always find that interesting whenever you see behind the scenes or just like, yeah, the dude who was like the, the killer or whatever. It's like really nice. He made his muffins. I always find that funny, you know? <laughs> that is so funny. Here's some cupcakes. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, we're all professionals, right? So we're all professionals. And so there's nothing worse than being on set or on stage with an actor who, oh, how can I say this nicely, <laughs> who might be a little less experienced, who really has in their mind that they need to absolutely go for it. They mm-hmm. need to absolutely go for it. And, you know, and, and you can get hurt. So when you're working with really experienced actors, especially I think I think that to a person in our gang, I might be wrong, but I would say overwhelmingly we are all theater trained actors. We all have theater training. And th- yeah. and that's what you do. Like it's a job. Like I would never put my hands on someone without saying, How can I touch you here? And and normally uh, you'll have like a fight choreographer um, who will make sure that everybody feels safe. I, uh, you know, I won't name names, but I worked on a TV show a couple of years ago and there was a, a young actor, like teen actor, or playing mm. teens, but he was probably 20 or 21. And he really hurt me. He, he hurt me on that set. Mm. And, um, you know, and it was like in the service of the material. He was just trying to be really angry and really committed. Mm. And there's nothing more dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? So before yeah. it's, it's make-believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's make-believe. You don't want to hurt it. You don't want to accidentally poke somebody like Mm -mm. too bad or or get someone hurt you know no 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 you don't you want to be able to like go to the green room and like have cookies together (laughs) (laughs) have these cupcakes that i made after i hit you here you go exactly exactly so before we get too much further um I don't know if you've noticed, but our podcast is kind of animal themed. So we ask each of our guests, if you could be any animal, what animal would you be? What animal would I be? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. What animal would I be? <sighs> I, 
So I, I can just tell you what popped into my head because I have not thought this through. Okay. But um, I'm going with giraffe. <laughs> and maybe that's because sometimes I feel like a giraffe. I have a very long neck and I have very long limbs. But what I think I love about giraffes is that they are incredibly graceful while also being incredibly awkward. And I think that that is, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that is behold and something extraordinary to be pulled off. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm, I'm sticking with it. Giraffe. Giraffe. Awesome. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> and I think, and I think they're vegetarians, right? And aren't they? Yeah. Uh, yes. They eat, they eat um, leaves. leaves off of trees. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they don't like pluck the occasional rodent because they're vegetarians. They're herbivores would be the, the word, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I am a lifelong vegetarian. I have never eaten meat or fish or chicken ever, ever once in my life. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. So giraffe, I can't believe I never thought of this before. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sorry, I was reading down the list of questions and I was like, Catherine, why did you make these questions so long that I have to read them? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was typing it when I was at work and I was just like, I should get this finished because I was like, I'm going to have a final, um, like a midterm coming up and I have not worked on this at all because I was studying, but... I can ask them if you don't want to read. <laughs> How dare you expect me to read and do homework for these assi- for, th- for these interviews? How dare you? I wasn't told about homework. I didn't know there would be a test. Are you trying to say that you are unprepared for this interview? No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no. No. Nicola. So- mm. <laughs> I, to scare- I thought I'd try to scare you just a little bit. You're How well, dare it, you? I am it, standing here in my living room and I am prepared for this interview. How dare you? Do you know how valuable my time is? Was that I, scary? Kind of scary? I, 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 scary? I, I, it's a little I, scary. I do, I do apologize. <laughs> what, do you don't block, do not there was block a visual, me on Twitter. <laughs> I, if there was a visual, I would come striding towards you with purpose. Yeah. Shaking in your boots. See? <laughs> Nicola sounds calm right now, but I guarantee she almost pissed her pants. Her, I, I'm, I'm sure her cheeks are very red right now. <laughs> well, that'd be telling, but <laughs> no, no kidding. Um, Kylie, I bought an autograph from yourself um, a Aww. while ago when you when you did your live stream, and thank you very much for that. I love it. Um, I got the the images of Grimshaw, and I remember thinking to myself, yeah, I can put that up in the house as kind of like a reminder to make sure to do my housework. Um, else, yes, Grim- I else think- Grimshaw will manifest in my house and scold me. So. I think you posted something about that, didn't you? Probably. That is done. Yeah, I can't is, remember. I, mean, I can't remember, but that is ringing a bell. Like I, yeah. I remember if it wasn't you, someone stole your idea. But I think I yeah. remember reading like, yeah, she'll remind me to, to get up and, and <laughs> clean my house. <laughs> she'll also ward off other evil spirits. That's that's what I said as well. It's like, oh, we'll keep evil spirits out the house. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so. I think you're making good use of her. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, we talked a little bit about the community earlier, but I want to bring it back real quick. So what has been probably the most surprising thing about the community? Uh, how 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 diverse it is in terms of, you know, again, I say again, although I don't think I've said this today, but I never played video games. So I really, I, I had no idea what to expect. Um, I think if you've listened to my podcast, I talked to Roger about how I remember one time we were sitting in the green room and he sort of sheepishly said, you know, I, I think this could ha- turn out to be kind of big, you know? I had no idea. I didn't even know what it meant. Um, And because I wasn't allowed to talk to anyone about it, I just, I sort of, it was my secret job is what I called it. I was like, I can't do lunch tomorrow. I'm on my secret job. I had no idea what to expect. So when it was released into the world and the fans, I mean, I joined Twitter the night before release. I Hmm. I wasn't even on Twitter just because, you know, Rockstar sort of sent us like Twitter specific pictures and and blurbs that we could add. And I was like, I'll join that party. And I really was not expecting women. I was not expecting women. I was not expecting people of all ages. I was I was really overwhelmed when I I went to 
London Film and Comic Con uh, in in the summer of 2019, and I was blown away by the people waiting in line to tell me how much this game meant to them. That were mothers, that were college students, that were um, struggling, uh, not struggling, but you know, trying out um, a new gender identity, and saying how Red Dead Online sort of gave them a lot of freedom to mm -hmm. to finally express who they truly are. Yeah. Um, I was blown away by how intimate the relationship relationships with the community felt immediately. Mm. I felt like people came uh, came to me either in person at events or on social media with open hearts telling me what the game meant to them. And I felt this intimate connection almost instantaneously. And that is not what I was expecting. I was expecting that it would be a mixed bag, that there would be a lot of bullying, that there'd be some hate. Every now and then someone will find themselves on my social media pages saying like, oh, the women are irrelevant in Red Dead. But when I say every now and then, I mean, I would say less than 10 times in the two plus years that the game's been out. And that's them, impressive. It, yeah. Yeah. That is not what I was expecting. I was really expecting it to be, I don't know, like the the things you, you read about that can happen on these fandoms. Um, mm -hmm. But my experience has been like 90% positive from people of all walks of life. Yeah. I know for me personally, I've been involved in a lot of fandoms and uh, there's a few things that are going to happen. Either you have where people will form like little cliques and it's like high school all over again. And if you don't mm -hmm. fit in with this particular clique, then like your fan art or whatever won't get noticed. Um, you're, mm -hmm. almost, you're almost like the black sheep of the fandom. So you're kind of stuck over here in your little corner. Or like you'll have a, a huge group of people that are really, really into this show or this movie or this game but no one really interacts with each other mm. and I remember um, when I joined well I, I joined Twitter back in like 2009 but I, I came back specifically to start following uh, cast members from Red Dead mm. and one of the first interactions I had was the awesome artist Durango was talking about leaving because she had been um, worn down because of a lot of the toxicity that had happened and one of the first things I said to her was oh you know don't let this get to you you know there are people that love you and I like I didn't even know I didn't know who she was I knew very little of her, of her art or anything like that but I just knew this was an important person in the community I needed to like protect mm -hmm. and so she ended up staying for a lot longer than I think she had intended because of you know just the encouraging words and I love that can we just say what an incredible artist she is yeah I, you know, and I've gotten she to is. meet her in person she is I think she's really spectacular at what she does and I think one of the the cool things about her and other artists in the community is that one of the first things I noticed about her was she was recreating some of the scenes with the rubber ducks. I don't yeah. know if you've seen that stuff. That I was like, yeah. yeah, I adore that. Ah, me too. And she was like, I know it's not really art, but let me tell you, I have my Susan Grimshaw duck. She gave it to me. She mm -hmm. came into town and she gave it to me. And I thought being an artist doesn't necessarily mean that you can paint the Sistine Chapel. You're doing something that you thought of that came from your creative brain. And, you know, and, and that is what makes makes it unique and that mm -hmm. is what art is and I hmm. um I'm blown away by the art in the community. My God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many talented people. Like we've said it before, there's so many talented like artists, like traditional artists and like photographers. And then there's um, like uh, Hannah. She's uh, she's someone who takes uh, photos, but she she does um, RDR mod. So she takes the character and she'll pose them in like a funny kind of way and then take a picture. So there's, there's one of a series I think of um, Arthur and one other character or Dutch just kind of like acting like they're a typical sports fan so somebody who's upset that their team is losing and just kind of <laughs> like getting angry and flicking things off and just like you know or just taunting the other team when they're winning and I just I absolutely love it you know. It's such an honor to be part of something that has inspired people so much you know I think for me like I, I played Susan for all those years but but once the game came out she belongs to everyone so mm -hmm. you know oh, and what's amazing is that I feel like I understand Susan better by seeing how all of you have put your own ideas into who she is and mm -hmm. whether that's through art or fan fiction um, it's just it, it's like now I feel like we are all sort of contributing to who these characters are and it's it's really cool mm. that's, and that's 
that's one thing I will say that I love about the Red Dead cast is like you see some people that will like kick up a stink over fan fiction like okay cool fan art but not fan fiction or vice versa and I love the fact that the cast as a whole seems to be encouraging of oh yeah you want to write about me and a same sex character go for it oh you want to write about me and you know this that and the other as long as it's you know not well tasteful is the wrong word but consensual <laughs> there we go that's yeah, the word like yeah. cons- consensual yeah, that- and tasteful uh, i would say consensual and tasteful like, yeah yeah you know. i'm assuming that you're referencing here that video that no sheer made yes um, Gosh, I thought that was just so moving. I thought it was so moving and so true. What an honor. What an honor that someone wants to explore this character and put them in different situations and give them full lives. Because who knows the truth of these characters? We don't know. There's no... Mm -hmm. There's no character Bible. Nobody gave me any backstory of Susan. I mean, there are certain things I know about her and her relationship with Dutch. We know that she was engaged once, you know, or at least that's what she says, right? We don't know. There's no, there, there, there is no Bible for who these characters are. So why not? Why not have fun with it? Exactly. Yeah. And I love I love the freedom of being able to do that because like we know enough of the characters to kind of get an idea of who they are as people, but as far as who like who they are we don't necessarily know like what what happened to bring them to this point we don't necessarily know and that's where the creativity can kind of jump in and go oh well she does this so maybe she's she's doing this because this one thing happened and so on and so forth i love that imagine and imagine if she had done this instead you know exactly very yeah, cool. It is. I think I may be remembering it wrong, but there was a, I think you were talking about your audition this season, um, for season, and it was sort of like you were playing a really kind of tough love or maybe sort of abusive mother-like figure mm-hmm. where you had to be yelling at like somebody. I don't remember. I think I may be remembering wrong. I'm sorry. But no, like... no, you've, no, actually you, you've got it right. That's right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, was there anything that you had had kept from that sort of person in the way that you played Grimshaw like once you were told oh well you got the part and you're playing this person and this is a little bit of a blurb of who they are and some of the script was there anything that you had kept from your audition in regards to Susan or did you just kind of evolve her from what you had read in the script? So that is a great question because normally my answer would be yes. Like most of the time if I audition for a movie or a TV show and I get the part, I, mm-hmm. I have an idea of what they responded to. So I'll at least bring that to set. But in this case, it was very different because um, – uh, rock star was so protective of their material. So um, you're remembering this correctly. I was not given any material before I got to the audition. And when I got there, I had to sign an NDA and I was given a script. And the script, if I'm remembering correctly, she was, they said she was Southern. Uh, mm-hmm. And they said she was an alcoholic, I think, drunk, screaming at her teenage daughter. Mm-hmm. And I remember, the reason I tell this story is because I remember thinking, like, this is vile. Like, especially, right, I don't know anything about video games. So I was like, if this is what it is, I don't know if I want to be a part. <laughs> like, really? like, but, Yeah, like, I don't know if I want to do this. Exactly, because it was so vicious. But then I had a little talk with myself. I said, Kylie, you're an actress. Just go act. Do this scene. And I ended up having the best time in the room. Uh, it, was, it was so great to audition for that. Uh, casting team and Joe Armanox was in the room I didn't I didn't know because we didn't work together right at first um, but she was mm-hmm. like I was in the room when you audition and anyway it was not set in a uh, the time period of Red Dead there was nothing to indicate anything about the game so that you know actors coming in couldn't guess at what they were doing mm-hmm. so the answer is really no because first of all a bunch of time went by I, I couldn't tell you how much for yeah. sure then I went in and did one day and when I got there I was given a script when I got there I <laughs> had no idea how to t-pose I didn't know what motion capture was I think Rob was there and I was like, what is this world? I certainly wasn't trying to recreate that character because um, the material was so wildly different. Mm -hmm. Um, I sort of picked up on Southern accents. No one ever said, this is the part of the country that you're going to be in. So I just sort of was like listening to maybe Rob and Roger and trying to match what they were doing. And I wish I could remember the first scenes that I did, but I I think I was so overwhelmed with the experience that that it just kind of went out of my head. And then 
then I didn't hear from them for a while. I think months went by. And every mm-hmm. now and then I would get like, um, my agents would call and just check my schedule and say, are you available? Rockstar wants to know if you're available. Um, and um, But I wouldn't get the booking. So I was like, well, maybe they're considering using me again. And then eventually I started coming in and, and, um, and again, there's no show Bible. There's no character backstory. So Susan was really created in each scene as mm-hmm. we did them. You know, the director would say she's angry or she's frustrated or she's worried or she's a little gossipy about that Mary Lynn, you know, like (laughs) whatever it was, you know, we would we would find it in the moment. And eventually I got to where uh, I knew exactly who she was. That's Mm. awesome. That's a great question. And normally I would. Normally I would bring my concept of the character. I was was laughing recently about a film I did called Thoroughbreds, which is. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing film and it stars Anya Taylor-Joy and Olivia Cook. And I just came in to do like two days on this film. And I had auditioned in New York and it was on tape. I think they were already shooting. Director picked me. It was uh, on location in Massachusetts and I got there. And mm-hmm. I remember, uh, actually, it was Anton Yelchin's first, uh, last film before he passed away. And I remember him uh offering me a script because no one had no one had shown me a whole script and so when I got on set I I did the scene sort of how I had done it in the audition room and I and the and the director said okay that's great but I think in keeping with the black comedy aspect of the film and I was like the the what now like the what now I had no (laughs) idea no one I had no concept of tone or style of the film until I got on set. So playing a lot of catch up. Yeah. So, so sometimes what I do in the room doesn't exactly translate to what they want when you're there, but, but I, uh, but I digress. That's really cool. <laughs> what was probably, um, you, and you don't have to go into absolute details if you, if you can't, but what was probably your favorite scene to film for the game? You know, I get asked this question a lot, not, not to insult your question. I see why people want to know, um, but it's really hard. It's so hard to say because I don't know. It's like picking a favorite baby. It's, it's just, um, Roger would a hundred percent say it's where I get to slap him. He w- <laughs> He's like, that's your favorite scene. Don't even pretend. Uh, <laughs> and that's true. I, I do love I do love that Susan is the only one that can make that that man bathe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are two that um, I'm going to give. I'm going to give a couple more, maybe even three. But um, the the scene where Susan is sending Tilly off into the world and mm-hmm. telling her that you know you're, you'll be all right. I just know it. That was a scene where we were Mia and I were both just in tears because mm-hmm. we we'd been working together at years at that point, and I think Mia was actually quite pregnant by the time we got to that scene in real life. And I'd watched her grow into this beautiful uh, mother. And and, uh, you know, it was very emotional. We were coming towards the end of our time together. And mm-hmm. um, I'll, I'll always remember that. Uh, there was a scene with Sam Strelitz, uh, Mary Beth Gaskell, mm-hmm. where she is, uh, Susan catches her looking in a mirror. Not everybody sees this scene, but there's this, this moment where Susan just turns on her about vanity and how one day they'll stop looking at you too. And it, she just becomes absolutely vicious. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Sam and I really, we were really there together. Sam's a spectacular actress. And and we were right in it together. And it was a moment where I got to see that Susan has all of these conflicting feelings about these girls. So she does have these maternal feelings. She would do anything for them if anyone tried to hurt them. She would do anything to protect them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, she, A, has those human feelings of having moved out of the time in her life where she feels all the attention from the men and that is painful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are real feelings of jealousy, especially in that camp. And, and she also knows that if you don't develop other skills and make yourself worthwhile, you may very well get thrown out. So Susan believes that she has to make herself, when she says she earns her keep, she means it. And so she wants these girls to know that looks will fade and that vanity will not give them the skills they need to be protected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and, and it was a real insight for me. And then I also loved working with Joe um, uh, when 
Karen comes to her and just lets her have it after what has happened with Molly. Um, yeah. No spoilers. Um, mm. And she's, you know, screaming, she was in love. And just getting to do those moments where Susan actually, I, th- I think since it comes from Karen, who always gives her so much to fight about, mm. when, you know, there's something about she finally can hear it. And, you know, she, she she thought she was doing the right thing with Molly, you know, mm. because she has to live by a code. But I think as everything is falling apart, it's a real moment for her of what have I done? What yeah. have I done? And my God, Joe. Oh, they're, they're all just so good. They're all my favorites. They're all my favorites. Penny. Um, Penny coming in as Molly. Oh my God, that scene where I don't know. Well, anyway, okay, I could go on and on. But... <laughs> I will no. say I I do love that scene with you and Benjamin Byron Davis. Mm. It's it's in chapter six. It's in Beaver Hollow where I think Grimshaw is asking Dutch, "What are we doing?" And then Dutch just loses it and starts screaming at her. That is like that's one of yes. my favorite camp interactions because you just feel all the energy and all the emotion, and you just think, "Whoa, okay, st- step yes. back, keep keep yes. keep your distance here because this guy he is very unpredictable." And uh, you just gave me chills up and down my spine. I remember shooting Nicola that scene very very well and i think that um you know oh gosh first of all what a dreamboat he is and you know <laughs> and that and that relationship is so precious right when they mm. dance together there is such a precious relationship and i and if i'm recalling this correctly and i would have to ask ben but i think that he, that he really had to be directed to let susan have it in that way because he has that respect for her as a peer right and i think i know that moment where she says i have always been loyal dutch right like it's really like a a, a moment for her that she's not expecting and i think you're right it's like it's a moment where we're like oh <laughs> oh yeah. that he's coming apart yeah he's mm. coming apart yeah mm. which can i just I mean... say that the idea mm-hmm. of very tall benjamin byron davis yelling at me would scare the absolute crap out of me <laughs> <laughs> so you are definitely a braver woman than i because like acting would have gone out the window and i would have run away <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it, yes, and no. Remember how we talked about how when the people scream at you, they're always the sweetest. I mean, he's just so such a sweet, decent, wonderful man. Um, I don't know if you've heard about how when we danced together, which we both just loved so much because we adore each other, that mm-hmm. Ben is so much taller than Dutch mm-hmm. that when we were dancing, I couldn't look him in the eye because to scale that would mean I was like looking over Dutch's head. Yeah. So I had to look into his into his throat. But he's such a romantic. And so every time I would catch his eyes, they'd be like, cut. <laughs> no, I didn't. Ben, stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Sweet. I just wanted to be in those moments where I had to like stare at his clavicle. <laughs> That's so funny, but yeah, like that would be the man. Like if he turned around and yelled at me, like I'd just be like, okay, never mind. You know what? I quit. See. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there were so many instances in chapter six where it's just like, uh, especially you know, whenever he does lose it. Like I don't think I got this interaction, but it's somebody had recorded where John is asking Dutch, "What are they doing?" In the same way that you know Grimshaw is, and Dutch is you know yelling at John, and if you approach as like Arthur he's like oh look you're here too and you know he starts calling them like snakes and things like that in Mm. camp and it's just like they've been here for years why are you like so angry I can't I can't tell you how much fun it is when we play the game or I should clarify usually when my daughter is playing where (laughs) I get to see scenes that that I wasn't a part of uh and just see how amazing everyone is, right? Like, oh gosh, it's like, it's all new. It's like, I know these people so well and I know these characters so well, but I don't know all of the, I don't know all of the action until I'm there um, Mm -hmm. playing as Arthur. And it's, uh, yeah, I I get absolutely blown away by the the work of my peers all the time. So, oh, that reminds me. Uh, I was watching when you went live on the Gamers channel. It's been a while ago. But you were playing and you were trying to get Susan to yell at you because you were filthy. Uh, yes. So I kept trying to say it, but of course, like chat goes so fast, you didn't see it. You have to give it a while. You've got to get like filthy before like Susan will say something. And I um, I would go just outside of camp and just literally just roll in mud and just throw myself over and over again. And then I'd come back, nothing. And I'd go back out, roll in the mud, come back, nothing. It took like four or five different tries. And then finally she comes over 
except I didn't get the one where she hit Arthur. I got the one where she was threatening to hit and he like blocked her and he was like, okay, okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. I think there are three different versions of it, whether you get clocked or whether you just kind of get teased or where you get like the, the hand pulled back, the threat. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> you fun. have, I think it depends on like the, the, how many days maybe you've gone so. being dirty. So that instance, she threatens to hit him and he's like, okay, fine. And then if you come back, um, you know, dirty and it's been like two or three days, you may get the, you know, slap. And then she forces you to go to like the thing to go take a bath. Just go wash yourself. I, I got, I got that scene. Um, if I can remember, I think uncle was sitting by the campfire ranting on about the philippines for some reason and then <laughs> grimshaw just strides over and yeah just wallops arthur clean across the face and i cheered because i've been trying so hard to get that interaction <laughs> yes <laughs> yes that was really yeah. fun. That was one of those acting moments. And I think it's why Roger loves to say that it's my favorite, where the director worked so closely with us because it's so specific, right? I mean, there's not a lot of people that could smack Arthur without getting shot in the face or, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and so what is the dynamic? Like that he just laughs, right? She hits him hard. So we really worked on that to find like, is it like your best friend's mom where it's like, you know, it's like she's not your mom so she can get away. It was really we really we really i think that the susan arthur relationship really came into focus in a different way mm -hmm. when we shot those scenes yeah because it, it's sort of um because i got the interaction before she you know i think it was like a random event that i had walked into and she was already by the campfire with all of the guys sitting around there the women were you know off doing something else and she was talking about how she felt um i guess not appreciated like she knows that they laugh at her behind her back type of deal mm -hmm. yeah you know? yeah at the and, campfire right mm -hmm. yeah at the yeah, campfire yeah, yeah. and yeah. i was just like oh no <laughs> you know yeah. because at, at that point i didn't really know too much about grimshaw but then when i got that event that speech and i think it was it was as early as like chapter two maybe the start of chapter three that i was just like i see uh, i can understand probably the long-standing people that were in camp besides like Dutch and Hosea and Arthur and you know just just kind of looking at her as if she was just a nag just kind of there and just whatever it's fine you know uh. we'll just ignore her type of deal or just she's past her prime type you know kind of thinking mm -hmm. and I was just like um, you know that that insecurity kind of came out in her when it was just all quiet and it just it felt it always feels out of nowhere a little bit whenever you get those big speeches from the other characters and it kind of feels like it was something that may have been boiling up to that point like mm -hmm. bubbling up and mm -hmm. now now it's coming out now that they've been in such dire straits for the last couple of weeks like people are breaking down emotionally that's 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 a great observation. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Like she's been holding it in because she has a job to do. But of course, you know, of course, it's painful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember um, the first so the first time I played. Okay, so a little backstory on how I got into Red Dead. Um, I actually watched a um, a YouTuber play it first. And then it got to the point where I was uh, like later on, he, he'd played for a while and I was like, I have to experience the ending for myself. I kind of knew what was coming, but I wanted to experience it for myself. So mm -hmm. I stopped watching him, bought the game and just lived in this world for like three days, just going like finding more and more beautiful spots and just camping and just living. And mm -hmm. I loved it so much. And then I started playing. And um, but I played through pretty quick because I'd already seen a good majority of the story by watching this YouTuber play. So I just wanted to very quickly get to where I'd left off and experience mm -hmm. the rest of it for myself. So the second time that I played through, I was like, okay, I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna because there was like a whole bunch of interactions that I've missed. There was a whole bunch of side quests that I missed and everything. So I basically just kind of lived at camp for a while. And if you stay at camp for too long, eventually Dutch and Grimshaw will approach you and go, why are you just hanging around? Go out, do things, make money. And I'm like, I'm trying to learn about all of you. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you will get those prompts. There was um always like um there's a RDR2 kind of like fan page on Facebook. I think I may have seen a picture on there where it's just like any interaction happening in camp and it's like Arthur kind of they they're like an Arthur so it's a picture a stock photo of a guy kind of like looking around the corner just kind of smiling and watching <laughs> this interaction happen and I was just like yeah that's Basically. that's us. <laughs> So funny. And it seems like no matter how much you contribute to the box, Grimshaw always, always will come up and say, you know, put a little something in the box, you yep. know? And yep. it's like, I just gave you like three gold watches. <laughs> Leave me alone. Get off my back, woman. Um, you are absolutely like a, a, a powerhouse in terms of just because Jackie was telling us she was looking at her at your um, IMDB and I was looking at it as well and it's just like so many credits for like television and I think um, some of these are movies and I don't know no they don't do plays on here I think they just do televisions and movies and shorts mm-hmm. but they also have like um, you know you were in Grand Theft Auto mm-hmm. as a Miranda Cowan and then of course you're in RDR as Grimshaw but it's just you know just out of all of that it's it's just amazing and it's it's kind of a two part question but you know did you have any favorite roles um, from any of the things that you've done besides the video games was there anything outside of the realm of video games that you like um and like what was your favorite medium that you've you found that you've liked so so far um well first of all thank you so much i've been really lucky to to um to work pretty steadily and um i really the truth is that I don't. I don't have favorite roles or favorite projects that I've done. I've had more fun on some than others, but but it really, you know, there are things that I take from every time I I work. And when I go to work, um, I always say to myself, I'll say this like little prayer. Where I'll say, um, move the story forward. Just move the story forward. My job is just to move the story forward. Mm-hmm. And um, so sometimes, like uh, when I was in the finale of House of Cards, that was that was such an interesting job because my agents came to me and said uh, she's only going to have like seven lines um, but you're going to be directed by Robin Wright and the scene is with Robin Wright and I was like and I'm in you know (laughs) all I want to do is watch her work all I want to you know I just want to uh, have that experience there are some directors like Woody Allen that I've worked with six times where Mm -hmm. I you know I get invited back and what's really special about those projects are that you you get like a working relationship with the director where you feel really free to try different things things. Um, I love working on television. Um, I think television is so much fun because you don't have the same amount of time that you might have with film. And so um, the stakes are usually higher. There's something Mm -hmm. really exciting. And I I do a lot of guest star work. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's sort of like going to someone else's dinner party where Mm -hmm. you don't really know anyone and they all know each other. And you're trying to figure out like, is this a really funny dinner party? Is this serious? Like how, you know, you're trying to guess at the... guess at the, at the style of the party um and then and then uh i i get to really just get out there and and contribute um i am a collaborator at my core that's what i want to do i like mm-hmm. working with other people so um so uh working in my industry often feels like like choreography and i i i like figuring out with the sound guy the best place to put my microphone depending on uh what my wardrobe is like that's creative for me i mean i let them make the decisions but you know i i just I like every aspect of this business. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I don't have a favorite. Um, and I will tell you, though, that I think that performance capture, which we did on, on Red Dead, is like the best of all of it. Because it's like being it's like being on on stage, mm-hmm. really, because everything is play pretend, right? So so it's yeah. really like you're on a big set and yet there is a camera pointed directly at your face. And so you get to do really subtle acting for the camera, but you also are in a big, big play pretend stage. And um and the player could come up from from anywhere. The player could be behind you, could become so 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 really it's 360 acting mm-hmm. um which which is is so cool and then as a woman or really as anyone i'm not so worried about my costume i'm not so worried about my makeup the animators are going to do all that i am just out there acting so there's a freedom with performance capture that um is unlike anything else i've ever done mm. yeah it's um 
I've heard so so many things about people going in as new with performance capture coming out and just like I don't understand all of the technology behind it but this is like the coolest thing you know and and people that have done it before are just like yeah it's always cool you know just like every time that they do it there's always something new being added to it that wasn't there maybe a year before or two years before yes and- every now and then we'd have to go back and reshoot something because the technology had advanced so much mm-hmm. um yeah since we last shot it yeah that's really true I mean, and it's- when something doesn't work they're actually they have to invent it Mm -hmm. like if something doesn't work it's not like they go you know buy it at the store they have to invent it that's you know that's that's what's happening the technology is evolving that quickly Mm. it's just such a fascinating medium because it's it's forever evolving i mean when you think back to you know like andy Serkis playing gollum in the lord of the rings and then you know, from the likes of Avatar, like Robert Zemeckis' his version of Christmas Carol. Mm-hmm. This is all, this is fascinating. It's just really, I, just, I mean, mm-hmm. words can't describe. <laughs> I'm trying I mean, to find words, but it's not really forming in my brain. So, <laughs> but I feel you, Nicola. I feel you. I feel, I feel what you're saying. And it's true. It really, it's advancing and it's, um, and it's exciting to be a part of it. And it's exciting to have a close up seat. And it's, it's, yeah. It's just exciting. Yeah, we're we're definitely not gonna ask you about um, rock stars like things for for motion capture because we don't want them knocking on your door and going, you can't talk, <laughs> you know, like you've <laughs> you've broken the agreement. You're going to rock star jail. <laughs> I mean, I promise you, you could not beat beat it out of me. You could not yeah. beat it out of me. Yeah, I remember I you talking about. I remember you talking about you you were plagued with NDA nightmares. No, literally. Like, literally, I, I had to wake my husband up. And I was like, well, this is kind of a funny story because I, I can't even remember what the dream was right now. But I remember waking up and I had this dream and I was sure it was real. And and then, of course, it wasn't real. And I was working the next day. And then I remember, like, saying to someone from Rockstar, I can't remember, someone on the production, I was like, oh, my God, I had this dream. And it was so scary. And it was like, even, I mean, even if it was real, it wasn't like that big a deal. And they were like, actually, that would have been a huge deal. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then round two of nightmares begins. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah. I can't. Well, you don't want to spoil anything. it. You, you don't want to spoil it. You don't want to be a person that that spoils it for anyone. You want everyone to come to that game unspoiled, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's why they do it. Rockstar wants the audience to have the adventure of a lifetime without having it spoiled. And so, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm and, I'm down for that. And I know in um, I believe it was with Roger, you were talking about a bunch of fans had figured out that something was happening, and they had pieced together like a whole bunch, like they had like mined through everyone's social media accounts and mm. figured out like the cast and all this and they were like pretty accurate it's like mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons why NDAs like this are necessary because people will go to extreme links to find because people are crazy and obsessed yes mm. yeah people yeah. were like finding us before I even knew what the game was I had no idea what the game was and someone was like I think your headshot made it onto one of these fan pages and I was like what are you talking about <laughs> I don't even know what the game is. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, did my head shop go out? go up on this fan site because they're going to take me out as in, like, take me <laughs> out or are they just like <laughs> they just want to know who I am yeah it's it's um like just just your work on the game and just anything you've done before uh, I haven't seen all of it I think I may have seen a couple of episodes that you were in for like you know special victims you know you know just law and order mm-hmm. and I was like um I was just like this, everyone, everyone is such, like, such a good job. Just everything, (laughs) you know? (laughs) You mean the the actors in my game? Yeah, like, everyone, everyone did so well. And just with the motion capture, I know, um, Roger, uh, I want to call it snippy. It's not snippy. It's more of just a a kind of, like, a good-natured, like, hey, it's performance it's not performance. Uh, it's not just acting. It's motion capture. It's performance acting. We're being 
you know, 360 were like yeah, recorded I, on I'll everything. I'll tell you what it is, so. is that, is that Roger and, and all of us, it's, it's the voice acting. It's when people mm. say voice actor, there's just, because there's nothing wrong with voice. Voice acting is what I did on GTA five. It's just not what we did. And so, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, we shot it like a film. We shot it like a film on a sound stage and you know, and I think Roger gets, you know, he gets understandably frustrated when especially journalists who should know better will yeah. still yeah. call mm -hmm. it a voice actor. But I don't want to speak for Roger, so. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's what you mean. Which, I mean, a lot of people, like, um, a lot of people do make that misconception. And it even I did. And I've, I've been playing video games for a very, very long time because a lot of people just don't know the full process and I think I finally uh it was when uh Detroit Become Human um mm. came out and mm. then Quantum Dream that company released footage of them in full uh mocap suits and everything and that's when I finally realized just how in depth a lot of this could go because they mocapped everything as well mm. yeah oh and that dream boat Jesse yes <laughs> I know him. So I knew I knew him. We worked together uh before he was on Grey's Anatomy. Um we we had done some work together here in New York. And mm -hmm. then um then I did two episodes of Grey's Anatomy with him. And it was so much fun to sort of uh get to see he's become he's become this big star and um and he wears it so well. He's so good at what he does. But yeah, yeah, like I know, like I I made the same mistake until I saw what actually went into it, and I was like, oh, okay, so mm. yeah, that makes sense. So it, yep. it's understandable that um that people would get really ticked off. Not saying that one is better than the other or more is one is more involved than the other, but it is there is a very big distinction between the two. And yeah. so yeah, I yeah. I say you know for the work it deserves to be called what it is. Yeah. Mm. Thank I mean, you. There, I think that's there, true. I mean, there is footage out there on on YouTube of people people choose to look that you know showcases the process, like you know whether it's Christopher Judge in God of War or Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson in The Last of Us or Elliot Page in Beyond Two Souls. It just shows you, you know, that's what the process of like making games have evolved into now. Yeah, that makes. That yep. makes sense. My brain is getting really muddled. I, I apologize. But, Not at all. You know. <laughs> but I, but I just want to say that I am going to have to jump off soon. So if you have any questions that you really want to get to, we should do those now. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. So we have a, something that's called like a lightning round. Oh, good. Um, I love that. Which is like little questions. Um. So, <sighs> coffee, tea, or neither? Like in morning, afternoon, whenever. Coffee. Coffee. Always coffee. I have a coffee. Roger was literally making fun of me minutes before I jumped onto this call <laughs> about my coffee problem. Coffee. Coffee, definitely. Okay. Uh, morning or night? Both. Uh, no. Well, morning and afternoon. Morning and afternoon. Yes. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yes. I'm an afternoon person. Morning, um, not so much. I'm a night person <laughs> all the way. Night owl. There I am. <laughs> oh, I thought you were asking me about coffee still. <laughs> I thought you were saying, when do I drink my coffee? Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm a morning person. I go to bed at like 10 o'clock. Uh, I like to get up early and and have my, have my coffee and go to Central Park and do my yoga and catch up on emails. So I'm a morning person for sure. Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, I like drinking coffee in the afternoon as well, but it doesn't have the same type of like, uh, I guess... Buzz? Exper uh, express buzzing, I guess on me. I I don't know. I'm forgetting the no, word. No, but Kat, it's the it's the ritual. It's the afternoon coffee <laughs> ritual. I like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Whether I'm meeting a friend somewhere back before the world shut down, or like, or today, my husband and I make the pot of coffee and we sit down together. It's like we try to we try to. It's it's civilized, is what it is. A little afternoon <laughs> coffee. Okay, this is supposed to be a lightning round. Bring it on. Bring it on. All right. Um, what's your favorite way to unwind? Like you're relaxed. What What do you like doing? I know you have Pokey, the little puppy. He's just so adorable whenever we see him on oh your gosh. on live streams. So do you like just sitting with them or? 
I, anything that I can do to just be with my family, my husband, my daughter, my dog, any time that I have to just sort of be with them, um, I, that that is what fills me. That is mm -hmm. what fills me up. We were, uh, we've been working on a puzzle this week. Like any time where we're just all together, that's whether we're watching a movie or doing a puzzle or ha sharing a meal, that is what fills me up. Okay. That, okay. That's very sweet. That's how I am with my family as well. I can Same. be stressed out and I just sit with them. And mm -hmm. then my daughter's like, mom, look at this. And I'm just like, yes, I will look at it. But first come here so I can take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, that, it's that safety net. You've got your people. Exactly. So this question came from me because um, when we do YouTube videos, we um, will uh, we'll go online, we'll find the gang members and we will add them into um, the YouTube video that we're doing. Oh, so fun. I happen, first of all, one of the best things and the most frustrating things is while I was trying to get footage of Grimshaw, I had to chase her around camp because she doesn't sit <laughs> still. <laughs> And so I caught her in various and assorted poses and whatnot. First, it started off as coffee. I look down at my phone. I look up and she's gone. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> so um, I happen to notice one of the things was Grimshaw was sitting there knitting. So that brings up the question. Can you actually knit or did you just have to learn how to do the hand motions? I cannot knit, although my daughter tried to teach me this summer, um, mm -hmm. and I did okay. Um, yeah, it, everything's play pretend, so I probably was holding two sticks and just, <laughs> yeah. Some I'm sure someone showed me what to do. I'm sure someone said, <laughs> do this, do this. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Okay, and <laughs> yeah. since we have someone in our midst who just got acting, like, is, is going with acting, they're going to school for acting, <clears throat> Nicola, Yes. <laughs> Didn't you just have your first lesson? Um, your first I'm, class, not lesson. I'm, I'm due to have a, a private lesson on the next, next Monday. Next Monday, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, because yeah. it's a it's a community college course that I'm doing, but you know, Fantastic. community col community college is still a good qualification, and I never understand when people turn their nose up because at the end of the day, you're still getting part of education you're mm -hmm. still learning something so i don't know yeah. who's turning their nose up but that's ridiculous that's mm -hmm. that is fantastic that's it's fantastic so with that being that's said good. do you have any advice for upcoming performers well that that's tricky because you're going to learn so many so many skills and you'll need all those skills but the key to great acting is great listening mm -hmm. and so and that that is hard to teach. That is yeah. really hard to teach. So I would say while you're learning all these wonderful skills and learning, you know, you'll learn some great uh, soliloquies and you'll study some, you know, some incredible playwrights. Um, try to stay open, you know, try to stay open and practice maybe just in conversations with friends and family, just really listening, not... Okay, so so in life, it is hard to be in a conversation and stay open listening without trying to think of what you're going to say, when you're going to say it. Like, when's my turn to talk, right? You might just, mm -hmm. right now, you might be waiting for me to take a break and you know what you want to say next. It's, when your next line is actually written for you and you know when you're going to say it, it's, it's, it's doubly hard. Mm -hmm. It's doubly hard to stay open to what the other person is saying because your line is coming up. You know what it is and you know when you're going to say it. So great acting is great listening. Um, and that is my advice. Yay. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. I, will, I will take that on board and use it as best as I can. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, Excellent. Thank you so, so much for coming down and sitting around the campfire with us. We appreciate it so much. And we hope that we can have you back for a more relaxed chat not just a we're here to grill you for all the information give it to us now <laughs> i would love it i would love it but only if you promise me a roasted vegetarian marshmallow well i think we can manage that <laughs> yes yeah. i think we, i think we can do that all right yay thank you so much <laughs> thank you for having me i'm you you are so loyal and so um i i just really appreciate your time and the passion that you uh, put into the community. And I, um, I'm really grateful to have had this time with you.
Oh, thank you. well, thank you. Now I get to go and cry. Oh, <laughs> but not because you forgot to press record. <laughs> no, we are covered on that. Nope, nope, nope. For anyone listening that remembers the blunder, we actually have all three of us recording this time because I was like, I'm not going to fuck this up this time. That's right. We are covered. We are triple covered. <laughs> yes. So with that being said, thank you so much again to Kylie for joining us and we will see you all next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Kylie. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Around the Campfire. We'd also like to thank Brett Van Dossel for providing the music. You can find him and his music at brettvandossel.com. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at cameogang1899. We're also on Instagram at Around the Campfire 1899. You can find us on YouTube at Around the Campfire Podcast. See you around, cowboys. <laughs>